Welcome, so for this video, we'll be answering this question before us. It says for the function this right here, we need to sketch the function including uh, including labeling all key points. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to recognize is that this is a quadratic and we have a restricted domain. So the fact that I have a restricted domain means I'm going to have an endpoint. So let's just come over here and let's figure out what this endpoint is going to be. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what the endpoint is going to be. And to do that, I'm going to sub in negative 2. So f of negative 2 is equal to what? It's going to be negative 2 squared plus 2, negative 2 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 4 minus 4 minus 1, which is going to be negative 1. So that means my endpoint is going to be therefore be negative 2, negative 1. So I can now come to my graph here and I can put that in. So negative 2, negative 1, this is going to be my endpoint. It's going to be a closed circle because I had a square bracket. If we come up here, you can see I had a square bracket, which means I'm including it. And I'm going to label it as well with a coordinate, negative 2, negative 1. Perfect. Now that I've done that, the next thing that I can find is my y-intercept. So my y-int, which will occur when x is equal to 0. So that means I'm going to get y is equal to 0 squared plus 2, 0 minus 1. So my answer is going to be y is equal to negative 1. Therefore, the coordinate is going to be uh, 0, negative 1. So now I can come down here and I can say that it's going to be right there. That's my y-intercept, 0, negative 1. It's also important to realize here that we can immediately identify what my turning point is going to be. My turning point is going to exist between these two. I know that because as you can see, look, horizontally these are have the same value. So they both have y is equal to negative 1. And because I know that a quadratic is symmetrical, it's going to have to be at x equals negative 1 for my turning point. So I can come up here now and I can say that my turning point is going to occur at x is equal to negative 1. And I figured this out by symmetry. But now I need to figure out what the corresponding y value is going to be. So to do that, I'm going to go f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 negative 1 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 minus 1, which is going to be equal to 1 minus 3, which is going to be equal to negative 2. So therefore, the turning point is going to be negative 1, negative 2. So now I can come here. And as you can see, it's going to be right there. So again, we knew it had to be at x equals negative 1 because it had to be between these two right here. Let's label that negative 1, negative 2. I now need to figure out what my x-intercepts are going to be. So I'm going to come up here. We're now figuring out what the x-intercepts are going to be. That occurs when y is equal to 0. So I'm going to get 0 is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 1. What you want to do here is you want to see if you can factorize this. So two numbers that multiply to get negative 1 and add to 2, well, that doesn't exist. That, that can't happen. So I'm going to have to use my quadratic formula. So x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Let's now sub in our relevant values. So I'm going to get x is equal to b will be 2 plus or minus the square root of b again. So 2 squared minus 4. a is 1 and c is negative 1 over 2, a is 1. Now I'm going to go x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root, 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 1 times negative 1, that's going to be plus 4 because the two negatives will make a positive, over 2 times 1 is 2. Let's keep on going. So I'm going to get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 8, over 2. Now here's an important part right here. We need to simplify this square root of 8. The square root of 8, whoops, the square root of 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2, right? Because 4 times 2 is 8. And then I can go the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is 2. It's 2. So the square root of 8 can be written as 2 to the square root of 2. And you can see the thinking behind it. Some, some people can just jump straight to this one right here, which is great. So that means I'm going to get x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 
2, the square root of 2 over 2. So it's important that we do this step right here of breaking up this 8 because now we can simplify all these 2's. So I can go this 2 will cancel out with this 2 and leave me with 1 and so too this 2 will cancel out with this 2 and leave me with 1 here as well. So that means my final x-intercepts are going to be x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 and then I should have said as well uh, down the bottom here is a 1 as well so I obviously don't have to put that in I don't have to go over 1 because everything is over 1 okay now when we are figuring out what our x-intercept is going to be can you appreciate that I'm not going to have an x-intercept on this side because this is an endpoint so I'm not going to have an x-intercept on this side so I'm only going to care about the positive one so it's going to be negative 1 plus the square root of 2 0 now, now I know that this is going to exist between 0 and 1 so that means let's put it here and it's going to look like this and this point right here is going to be 1 plus sorry minus 1 minus 1 plus the square root of 2 0 perfect so as you can see, what I've put in here is my endpoint, my turning point, my y-intercept, and my x-intercept. So quite a bit of work went into this. And you can see all the different sections that we've done here to do it. So a simple graph does take a bit of work when doing things by hand. All right, now we need to state the domain of the function. And this is kind of like a tricky little question here because the domain is actually given to us up here. This is the domain. So if you're able to read your function notation efficiently, you can immediately just say, hey, my domain is going to be negative 2 to infinity. You can also read that here, so remember it's just all your x values, so negative 2 to infinity. Remember you're including that negative 2. And then my range is going to be all my possible y values. So as you can see here, my lowest y value is negative 2, and it goes all the way up to infinity. So it's going to be the same. It's going to be negative 2 to infinity. And again, you're including that negative 2, because that's your turning point right there. Okay, and that's everything we needed to do here. So this was our domain. This was our range. Uh, that's everything we needed to do. Hopefully you found this useful in going through it. And I'll see you in the next one.